Good morning, everyone. This is Michael with Houston Grass, and uh, welcome to the Houston Grass podcast. Uh, we've been doing this uh, probably a little over a year now, and uh, we're back to uh, the, the depths of, of summer here, even though the calendar says that uh, it's almost September here. Uh, we are in the middle of a, a really ugly drought. I actually I haven't checked the drought monitor this week, but well, I guess they updated on Thursdays and I looked at it last Thursday and it, it, it's ugly. Uh, most of the Texas Gulf Coast here is in the second from the worst uh, category that they did they issue and really only central Texas is is worse and all of those areas are ever expanding. So uh, the main thing we want to talk about here this morning is is drought and issues related to it we're we're in a uh in an ugly one and i've i've heard that about the only thing that's going to break it uh could could be uh something of a of a tropical nature and uh we'll we'll, we'll have to see what the future holds uh uh florida is uh battening down the hatches today as a matter of fact getting ready for for a pretty ugly storm uh coming in down there but uh we uh, kind of wish we could get a little bit of that, but uh, that is not the case. And there are things that you need to do regarding your your lawn when these times come around, which is just, it's kind of inevitable. So uh, I guess the main thing we want to talk about is probably chinch bugs. Uh, uh, the, the, the drought stress is one thing. I was at an old neighbor's house the other day and they installed grass this last May, so whatever, three months ago, three months and some change. And uh, we haven't really had any good rain since then. And when you are getting supplemental water uh, falling from the sky, it can save anybody's uh, yard. Uh, but when you're getting nothing, uh, even if you have established grass, you can have problems, which a lot of you are probably seeing, but if you just planted grass and it's pretty young still, uh, what, what you're doing, is, I tell everybody is, if you're relying solely on your irrigation system and you're never putting a sprinkler out there with a hose, sprinkler systems are good, but depending on who you have install it, there's not very many of them that are perfect. And uh, people will call and it's a mystery to them why why this spot in the yard is, uh, is, is, is drought stressed or has chinch bugs or whatever. And it is, uh, usually it's nine out of 10 times, even more it's, it's, it's lack of water. You go out there, stand while the irrigation is going off and you're probably not going to be getting very wet. There might be just not enough overlap there. Any, any number of things, not running the, that zone long enough, take a screwdriver, stick it in the ground there. And, and I suspect, strongly that you'll probably find uh, some, some real hard, dry dirt underneath there. So uh, watering is key. I know I know it's getting expensive. Everybody's tired of high water bills, but uh, uh, if you don't give that grass an inch of water a week, uh, whether it's out of the hose or out of the irrigation system, that grass is gonna get stressed at the very least. And depending on how far away you are from that inch, uh, you might start to see some drought damage. Uh, and the problem with drought damage and drought stress is that chinch bugs move in when, uh, when, when that happens. And once they move in, uh, it, it can be really detrimental. They, they, they kill the grass. There, there will be nothing left there. It is certainly possible to, to, to kill St. Augustine uh, with just drought and heat uh, and lack of water but usually chinch bugs uh, will, will help that process along if you're, if you're not watering. Uh, what are some signs of a dying lawn? The grass is protecting itself. You come home at five o'clock at the end of a hot day, the grass is protecting itself when you see the blades kind of close up. Uh, they're trying to retain that moisture, that little bit of moisture that they've got them. So closed up is one thing, but uh, once that grass starts to turn brown and really lose its color, uh, that you've got to get that water on it quick. And if it gets to a point where you can dig down in the hay like grass and you see the stems that are running uh, parallel to the ground, uh, not the blades of grass, but the stems running down there, uh, if they get to where they're brittle and they just they break real easy, that grass is dead. It's not coming back. 
what usually happens once St. Augustine dies, it does, you can't pour enough water back on it to, to bring it back to life. And certainly if chinch bugs get in there, it's gone. And what usually happens is per, common Bermuda grass and or other weeds will take over those areas. I'm seeing it in tons of people's yards. Uh, I've even got a little spot in my office that uh, it, because it's not getting enough water, uh, it's about a three by three foot area that's uh, that's got drought stressed and uh, it, it, it's it's definitely it's it's taking its toll and uh that grass is being taken over by common bermuda grass and what will have to happen is that's going to have to be sprayed with roundup uh or glyphosate of some sort and uh it's going to have to be taken out removed down to the dirt replaced with new grass or that bermuda grass will, will spread over the area uh so that that's that's what you're looking for is those those brown spots in the yard uh, how you know you have chinch bugs, there's, uh, I've been searching this morning, there's lots of videos out there about how to identify chinch bugs. Uh, but I tell everybody what I do personally, you get out on your hands and knees uh, at, the, at, at, a, at a real ugly spot in the yard where the brown grass is, where, but on the perimeter where it's still a little bit green and you start spreading that grass out and uh, uh, looking and what it is that there'll be little, they, that I, I equate it to about the size of a gnat, maybe a little bit bigger than a gnat, uh, crawling around in there. And, uh, the adult ones have, have white tipped wings. So where their wings fold over on their back, they make a little white X. And that's, that's really how you identify chinch bugs. When you have enough of them to be doing damage, it's pretty evident. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, Somebody asked the other day, should, uh, should I cut the grass during a drought? Absolutely. If you were doing your job and you were watering and you're fertilizing, continuing to fertilize, uh, which by the way, you do need to continue to do as well. Keep on your regular schedule as far as fertilization goes. Uh, I believe that was another, another question somebody asked me. Uh, you will still, because we are having to irrigate so much, you're flushing through a lot of those nutrients and whatnot it is a good idea to stay on that fertilizer program. Uh, however, it is even more critical that you really water that fertilizer in because if you don't follow uh, an appropriately measured out amount of fertilizer, uh, if you don't follow that up with a good watering, uh, you can burn your grass really easily. So uh, you want to be uh, mindful of that, but you absolutely, if, if you're watering and, and, and you're fertilizing uh, how you're supposed to, that grass is gonna be growing. You do want to continue to mow it. Uh, you want to encourage that uh, that uh, horizontal growth. And uh, what you do want to do is be very mindful of it, to not clip very much of it off. Mow it high. The more the higher you can mow it, the more it'll shade that dirt and try to hold on to that moisture, and the less it's going to stress that plant when you uh, when when you cut less leaf tissue. So uh, the rule of thumb is never take more than a third of the leaf tissue that's there that even applies doubly now. So you definitely want to make sure that, uh, keep that mowing height up, uh, uh, and in times like these, mow, mow it, mow it higher than you've mowed it before. Uh, you can raise like on a push mower, you could probably raise that deck just about all the way to the top and, uh, and it, it, and it'd be okay. That mowing frequency still needs to stay the same about, about once a week. So again, you're not cutting too much of that leaf tissue off at once. So keep that in mind. And uh, let's see, how do you know if you're underwatering uh, and what does underwater St. Augustine look like? Well, uh, we've kind of talked about it. It starts to get, like I said, it starts to, you come home at five o'clock and from work and you see the grass is closed up. It's kind of got a gray look to it and whatnot. Uh, instead of that bright, uh, vibrant green from your, driveway uh you can see the grass opened up and it's and it's good looking uh if it doesn't look like that you need to hit it with some water if the irrigation system's not supposed to go off the next day uh i would uh, get out there and, and and water then uh ideal time to water the grass is it always is in the morning uh i would say anytime after 4 a.m uh Closer to sun up is probably better, but I can tell you what we're going to start running into with water restrictions is that we are going to, uh, 
the water pressure, especially in, in the cities, is going to fall down dramatically. On top of the showers everybody's taking in the morning, everybody's going to be watering their grass. Even when they do the even odd addresses and whatnot, everybody's going to be running their irrigation. So bump it back. Go, go, go uh, earlier, earlier in the morning. Like I said, uh, I've had to bump mine back to 4 a.m. just to get the, uh, just try to find some water pressure. So if you don't have enough water pressure to run your irrigation system, what you'll find is at the end of each run, uh, you're going to be, uh, you won't have enough water pressure to pop those heads up or they're just not getting good coverage. So uh, you want to uh, be, be mindful of that. Uh, but what does the grass actually look like? I mean, like I said, it, it, it closes up a little bit and that's okay. Hit it with water the next day. That's fine. Uh, when it starts to really get brown and crispy, when you walk out across there and it's kind of prickly because it's, it just doesn't have much give to it and whatnot, then it's starting to become a problem. And uh, you might have already lost it at that point. But if you can, again, dig down in it, you see some green in those stems uh, down there. The grass is certainly salvageable and you just need to kick that water on. And uh, I was gonna mention this about, we talked about water restrictions there. What it may come to is that we can only water one, two, maybe three days a week. And uh, just like we always say, those deep, more infrequent waterings are better anyway. So if you're running your zones, uh, Right now, I had a gentleman call me the other day that said he was running his zone seven minutes twice a, twice a day, a couple, few days a week or whatever. That is not what you want to be doing. You need to be watering those, like, some, for example, and I don't know uh, uh, how accurate this is, but I can tell you I've had good luck with my lawn for 10 years. Uh, I run the pop-up heads, the ones that pop up and spray in a stationary area. Those run 15 minutes per zone uh, twice a week when we're not in a drought. Uh, and uh, the pop-up and the ones that move back and forth, the rotor heads, they call them, uh, those run 25 minutes a zone. And I have now bumped that to three days a week is what I'm doing right now, especially in the, the parts of the yard and flower beds that are receiving more sun than others. They get, they get no relief from the sun. So uh, I have done that. So I can tell you that that has worked for me. Uh, that is probably getting you close to that one inch of water that we, that we recommend. But so those longer, deep, uh, infrequent waterings are, are ideal. So uh, if, if, if we do get restricted on number of days or you already are restricted on number of days to water, bump those times up and, uh, and, 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 and get that water down there deep. Those roots will chase it and uh, that makes for a stronger, healthier plant. You don't, you still don't want to water in the evenings. Right now, brown patch is the furthest thing from anybody's mind. I can tell you in a normal year though, that brown patch is, is, is an issue. Mid-September, which we're a couple of weeks away, is the time to normally apply your first uh, round of the Heritage G to prevent the brown patch or, or a fungicide of, of your choice that, that, that works. Uh, right now, we're not, we're not seeing anything, anything like that. It's so hot and so dry that uh, Rhizoctonia is, is what they is what they call the the fungus that, that kicks that off. Uh, it is non-existent right now. Uh, I suspect strongly this weather pattern has to change eventually, and, uh, it, and it could be. But right now, it's a it's a non-issue. Uh, so keep that in mind. Things weather conditions start to change, you do need to get that uh, treatment for the brown patch out. But as watering goes, you know that that's the one of the reasons we tell everybody to water. Uh, five, six o'clock in the morning, you want the water to, uh, to get that plant there. You don't want a bunch of sun evaporating your water, wind blowing it away and whatnot. So you get it before the wind kicks up, before the sun comes up, but you do want that plant to not sit there and be wet for very long. So you want that sun to dry off those leaves and that keeps the fungus, primarily brown patch, what we're talking about right now, uh, away, uh, the further you move that time back in the night, the longer that plant stays wet, the, the, the more of an issue that can be. So, so keep that in mind right now. I know it's not uh, on anybody's mind, but uh, I suspect strongly this weather pattern will, will change eventually. And uh, uh, you just be mindful of when you're watering and, and, and do be mindful that uh, that brown patch season is, is, is fastly 
approaching. So uh, that is uh, something, something to keep in mind for sure. And uh, let's see, my last question I have here, I guess, is how long can grass go without water before it dies? Uh, there are different, lots of different grasses. We sell several of them. Uh, there is a chart that we have that uh, talks about drought tolerance. That's, that's what you're asking here, basically, is how much drought tolerance do these different grasses have? Uh, I can tell you Bermuda grass usually has the highest uh, drought tolerance. Uh, and, and then I'd, I'd say the others are, are, are somewhere behind it. We tell everybody, hey, if you wanna have pretty green grass, it takes an inch of water a week, no matter what kind of grass that you have. Uh, so, but how long can it actually survive without water or with very little water? Bermuda is gonna win that race, I feel like. Uh, Zoysia and St. Augustine are gonna be somewhere somewhere behind it. And uh, so I, I, you can start pulling water off of, off of the grass. And if you can give it just some, you can prolong that. But uh, I really don't have, there have been, they do drought studies. When they come out with these new grasses, they, uh, they do these drought studies and uh, some of them do better than others, but uh, you're, you're, you're certainly talking weeks and not months uh, when, it's, when it's, I don't know, I think I saw on the weather the other day, I think almost we're, we're about to break the record for number of days over a hundred degrees. And uh, uh, this month we're at the end of August and I think it's been over a hundred here around Houston most, most every day, if not every day. Uh, there's not a lot of plant material of any kind that can handle that much heat for that long of a period without, without some water. So, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it gets ugly when it's like this. Uh, I know that the, the water, it's no fun running that irrigation and getting $300 water bills and stuff. Uh, and I, I know at some point you say, well, I'm, I'll just replace it, but that's an expensive proposition as well. So, uh, do try to stay on top of that watering look for those dry spots around the yard uh, be mindful of your irrigation system if, it, if it's not getting 100 percent coverage don't be afraid to stick that sprinkler out there and uh i like the sprinkler the i call it a wand style sprinkler that's got the all the holes in the bar and it goes back and forth like this the kind of used to run and jump through the yard as a kid uh, because i can see the the perimeters of that easier and uh so stick that out there for two hours uh to, usually at, at city water pressure before i had an irrigation system that's how i watered and i watered twice a week for two hours so a total of four hours a week i know some people are kind of flabbergasted when they hear that but that's really what it takes to put out an inch of water at, at most at, at the water pressure we had anyway uh and uh stick that out there that'll get your plants your trees and, and everything and you don't have to worry about what well, is this head not working over here or or whatever uh and that that that'll cover you but uh that's what i told my neighbor to to do the other day to that that's the way to to save it and uh because those those dry spots just get drier if you don't and standing out there and hand watering is one thing i guess if you've got a real small area but uh, I see people doing that in the evenings now when I go home from work and that's just a, 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 a fruitless task. And that big volume of water hits that hard dirt that just goes away. You've got to have uh, water that's slowly applied to that dirt, especially on our hard clay soil so that it'll take that water in. Uh, so slowly applied to the sprinkler is kind of the only way to do that. And uh, so be, be mindful of that as well. So, uh, that is all I can I can think of right now. Uh, I uh, hopefully the, the rain's going to come soon. Maybe not the form of a Category Three hurricane would be nice, but uh, if we get a little rain, that would go a long ways and solve a lot of these issues. So uh, we'll be back next month, and we'll we'll talk see see where we are then. Thanks for listening.